definitely looks very nice so let's try all right g'day guys welcome back to my channel so we got saturn up nice and high in the sky tonight and i'm going to test these two telescopes out on it so i've got this maxitoff cassegrain skymax skywatcher skymax 127 natively 1500 millimeters and i have got this skywatcher ed80 which is natively it's a refractor and it's natively 600 millimeters so you know obviously quite different this is obviously going to get us in quite a bit closer but i think they could both be nice um, especially for visual so in terms of eyepieces i've got my barda hyperion 13 millimeter and i've got a teleview two times barlow um, I've also got in here, I've got my Celestron uh, three times Barlow as well. So we'll give it a test and we'll see how we go. Obviously, we're going to be all telescopes have like a useful practical magnification. So we'll see how we go and see, you know, when the image begins to degrade. But we can we can test the three times Barlow on it as well. I do have a little orthoscopic eyepiece here, which is a seven and a half millimeter. So I might try this one as well and see how that looks. But yeah, mainly, look, the chief purpose of this exercise is just to give these two telescopes a test, see how Saturn looks through both of them, you know, see what the advantages are of either of them. My mount outside is already polar aligned, so I should be able to just slew to Saturn and get, be pretty close and then just get, you know, just shouldn't take me too long to get centered on the object. So yeah, first off, let's take the Maxitoff Cassegrain outside put this on the mount. Now this is going to take 30 to 40 minutes to cool down. So I'll come back when this has cooled down and we can start having a look. All right, so I'll see you soon. Yeah. So I've had this set out here for about 45 minutes. So it's down to ambient temperature. It's looking nice and sharp. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's try. Okay, that looks nice, but let's try. Let's try two times. Let's try two times Barlow. Let's see how we're looking. Okay. Just make sure I've got the right eyepiece. Yep, 13 mil. Okay, that still looks really nice and sharp now. Mm -hmm. Nice. See a couple of the moons there. Okay, guys, I just wanted to show at this point, just to give a slight indication. Now, this is not the best way of doing it, but I'm in Stellarium and I've programmed in my eyepiece and the um, also like the telescopes. So look, this would be kind of, this will give you sort of an idea of what you see through an eyepiece. So it's not going to be, sometimes people think the planets are going to be huge, you know, through a telescope. And look, it's going to be quite small. You are going to be able to see like Saturn, you're going to be able to see the, like the sort of the rings on Saturn, but it's not going to be huge. So this, for example, is the Mac 127 with a two times Barlow on it. So if it had no Barlow, you know, it's going to be obviously even smaller, but a two times Barlow, you know, you're going to see, you're going to see it quite nicely. Now, of course, if I stepped this down to the 80 ED, now this is a bit tricky to see. It's not very, it's not very good in this picture because it's actually sort of obscuring it with the moons. So it's not very easy to see, but obviously it's going to be smaller again, quite a bit smaller again, just through something like an 80 ED. So, you know, I think with the 80ED, with a three times Barlow on it, I actually got some nice views. It's pushing the magnification, but I did get some nice views with a three times Barlow. And of course, it's going to change again if you're using a camera sensor. So if I switched now to putting a camera sensor, a popular camera like an ASI ZWO224 one shot color camera. Now, if I had that, um, if I had the uh, 80ED with a two times Barlow, it's going to appear bigger with the with the camera sensor there so you can see there that shows the border of the camera sensor three times barlow obviously a little bit bigger again um so you know it's going to be bigger on a computer screen of course with using a small planetary camera like this asi224 camera now the views are not going to be as sharp as what you see here when you're looking at it on a computer and you will have to do some 
you know, you ideally want to do some processing and stacking and record a short video in order to get the best results when you're using a planetary camera. I have got other videos on that if you want to have a look at those. Um, if we switch over to the Mac, so this is the Mac 127. Now you can see with the three times Barlow, you're getting in really close to, to Saturn. So um, obviously, you know, if you were wanting to image and you really are wanting to get a decent um, or, you know, a reasonably good quality image, the Mac 127 probably was something like a two or three times Barlow um, and then taking a short video with a planetary camera like a 224, which is a really good, solid, affordable one shot color camera. Um, then you can definitely get some good results on that Mac 127. So that's just to give you a quick idea of just, you know, the difference between an eyepiece and uh, and also a sort of a common um, a common um, planetary camera like the 224 and that's the eyepiece which is like the Hyperion 13 millimeter there of course you can go up in eyepiece but um, you know there does get a maximum useful useful magnification there so that's just to give you a little idea guys of what you're gonna what you're gonna be able to see there all right guys so same thing now same test but I put the ED80 on so only 600 millimeter focal length on this so I'm going to start off with a 30 millimeter eyepiece same as we did last time so let's um, let's see how we go with this little this little guy on okay here we go <clears throat> so my mount's polar aligned, so I should be pretty close. Let's see how we're going. Oh yeah, just a little bit out of focus. Nice. Yeah, so interestingly, on this refractor, it seems to be able to handle, even though it's pushing it. It can actually handle that three times Barlow with this 13 millimeter piece. And it's actually a really nice crisp image still. Yeah, really nice and crisp still. Beautiful, can even see, just see the division now in Saturn. I mean, the rings are f nearly side on, but I can just about see the gap. So of course, this is pushing us out now in focal length with the three times Barlow. So we're kind of up to the native focal length of the Mac at this point, because we're, we'll be at 1800 millimeters. Definitely a comparable image. Yeah, really nice. All right. Let's go kamikaze and we'll put the seven and a half millimeter orthoscopic on just to be crazy. All right, guys. So what were my conclusions on these two telescopes? So look, I've spent, I spent a couple of hours on them. Um, I might actually go back out and spend a little bit more time looking at Saturn a little bit later tonight. But look, I would say in summary, both of these telescopes are really nice for viewing Saturn or Jupiter actually either of those now obviously you know this this uh, Skymax 127 is at 1500 millimeters natively yeah so it's going to get you in closer 
the good thing about both of these telescopes is the Mac and the the the, uh, the refractor here. They both give nice contrasty images. You know. Don't get me wrong, Schmidt Cassegrains are really nice as well, and a lot of my best images of Saturn and Jupiter have been taken with my Schmidt Cassegrain. But in terms of viewing and visual and getting that really nice contrasty sharp image, I do really like refractors and also these Macs give a really nice view as well. Now with the Mac, you're gonna obviously need to make sure that you've got a dew shield. I just use a homemade dew shield that I put on the end here because it's gonna, it's gonna um, obviously dew over pretty quickly. But you do need to leave this this uh, Mac out for at least 30, 30 to 40 minutes before you start viewing. Otherwise, you'll kind of get tube currents and you'll get that kind of wobbly sort of image. Not so much so with the refractor. You can kind of just get this on and start looking. But yeah, so obviously the refractor, the ED80 is only 600 millimeters. However, I did find with the, I could actually push this with the three times Barlow. So predominantly for all of my viewing tonight, I've been using this 13 millimeter Bada Hyperion and I've been using a two times Teleview Barlow. Now that was fine in this telescope. So that's pushing you up obviously to, you know, 3000 millimeters because this is natively 1500. So it's getting you in quite nice and close with this Mac. And now with the uh, ED80, I could actually push it. I did find I could push it up to the three times Barlow. So I've got a Celestron LX three times Barlow. And by the way, these little Celestron LX Barlows, they're really a really nice affordable Barlow if you want a good quality um, solid Barlow. This, um, this Celestron XL LX three times Barlow has been really good. Um, and I was able to put this on the ED80 refractor and still get a nice sharp image, which takes this up then to, kind of takes it up to a comparable focal length of what this is natively. So this then would be, you know, 1800 millimeters. So that's getting me in nice and close. Um, I, on this occasion, I didn't tend to use this orthoscopic eyepiece. I have got this ortho, um, this seven and a half millimeter orthoscopic. I, I tended to find that was pushing the, um, tended to find that was pushing it a little bit with the with the magnification. It was okay again with the two times Barlow, but definitely no chance with the three times Barlow. So I personally, I just preferred sticking to this sort of thirteen millimeter. Um, eyepiece, these Bada Hyperions, they've got nice eye relief. But look, the main point is both of these telescopes are really good for visual. If you're, if you're really wanting to get into imaging and you want to take a nice, you know, pretty decent um, photo of the planet and process that photo and sharpen it, I think the Mac 127 is the way to go. But purely for visual, actually you can get away with either of these telescopes and actually the ED80 does a good job as a, just a good all-rounder. So yeah, definitely both of these telescopes really nice for uh, visual use of Saturn. So all that's left to do is say, you know, clear skies everyone. Um, and yeah, get out there, get out there, have a look at Saturn now. It's up nice and high here in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, yeah, definitely worth taking some time to have a look at Saturn. So catch you later everyone.